What's up guys? Welcome back to Chugging Pepper's Farm. I'm Natasha and today we're going to be continuing this conversation we are having about what we are going to be growing in the garden this year. I almost dived into the pepper conversation. However, I just finished filming the tomatoes and the cucumbers and I'm still not fully over the sickness that we've had growing around. It's just that winter yuck that everybody's been dealing with. And I get really rambly when it comes to peppers. So we're gonna talk about squash next. Which, I don't know, it's, there's a lot of plants. <laughs> so if you're wondering what we're going to be growing this spring and why we're going to be growing it and what we're not going to be growing and why, stay tuned, we're gonna get into this. So this year I am planning on growing a lot of pumpkins. I love pumpkins. Pumpkins are wonderful. Not only are they really fun to grow and extremely beautiful, but there's a lot of culinary uses for them. They're very, very good for you healthy-wise, <laughs> healthy-wise, health-wise, and they're just, they're wonderful. You can make a pumpkin soup that's just to die for. I've made that. I can link the video in the description of this one if you guys want. And we just, we really like pumpkins in our house. Pumpkin tarts, pumpkin muffins, pumpkin bread, and I want to make pumpkin stuff. Ooh, a pumpkin cookie would be good. Okay, all right. Um, anyways, focusing. Okay, so, yes. Oh, and, and extra pumpkins that you grow and you don't end up using, you can feed to your animals if you have animals on your homestead because pumpkin has a natural deworming element. So you can feed it to your goats and your chickens and your sheep and all that stuff, your pigs, and it can benefit them in that way. So it's never a bad thing to grow pumpkins in your garden or on your homestead. I love pumpkins, if you can tell. So we're going to talk about what varieties we're going to be growing this year. Now, what I am going to say to you is I struggle with growing pumpkins. And I struggle with growing pumpkins because sometimes they have a very long growing time. And we get vine borers so badly here. And we've tried everything. We have tried wrapping your squash in an ace bandage or aluminum foil. We do neem oil and hand picking and squishing, but eventually what happens is no matter how diligent you try to be, when you have five kids and 75 million farm animals and an entire garden that can grow a ton of food, you can't get to every single plant. It's impossible. And I try to take the path of least resistance in gardening, which means I don't wanna create more work than necessary for myself. I want gardening to be enjoyable. I want it to be something that I love and look forward to and not something that becomes a headache or tiring or frustrating. And when you put a ton of effort into your plants and then they don't grow, it's extremely frustrating. So the way that we deal with the vine borers is if we notice that there is a lot of pest pressure damage happening, we try to pay a little bit more attention. We squish them, we remove leaves that have eggs. We are going to try to cover some of our squash with row covers just long enough to allow the plant to mature. Another big thing that we are going to do is grow our squash on the ground. Because with squash, if a part of the squash gets damaged, you can cover that section with dirt. And as the squash continues to grow along the ground, it will put new roots in if it's not too far gone. So we can help prolong the plants that way. But in years past, the best thing that we've ever done is just continue to succession sow them. We will start squash seeds every few weeks really throughout the summer and replant them in so that way there's something continually happening. Pumpkins are a bit of a challenge though because they take longer to develop than things like your patty pans or your zucchinis or your summer squash. So one of the pumpkins that I'm really excited about is a winter luxury pumpkin. This is from So Right Seeds right here. You can find these at SoWrightSeeds.com or Amazon. I am not affiliated with any of these seed companies. I am not promoting them. I am just telling you what we like, what we grow, and how it works. The winter luxury pumpkin, this one's about six pounds, and it has this really cool frosted look to it. So it's a really great display pumpkin for the patio or in the house, fall decoration-wise. It also has a really good flavor. It does a great job as being a pie pumpkin or a muffin pumpkin. So this is a really good one. And I have a ton of seeds for this, actually. I have some from So Right, and then I also have some from Seed Savers Exchange. This is a, a good company as well. Ooh. I got seed fluff everywhere. This is a Long Island cheese pumpkin. This is one of my favorite pumpkins to grow. I love this. This is amazing as a pumpkin pie. It's very, very good. It is naturally sweet and it's delicious. It's about six to 10 pounds. It's a beautiful ribbed pumpkin. It's kind of flat. I love this pumpkin. So 
Yay for this. You can tell I have a ton of seeds. Let's save. I really like that one. Okay, this is the one that, this is one of the ones that I'm most excited about growing, but I'm not excited about saying on camera. <laughs> I have a couple of these actually. So Seth might need to come over here or at least instruct me on how to say these so I don't totally embarrass myself. Galu. Galu. Daisine. No, what? Daisine. 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 Okay, so this is a Galu Daisine pumpkin and it is a beautifully warded pumpkin. This is gorgeous. Now, some people don't like a warded pumpkin. I love it. I think it is so pretty to look at. Obviously, it's French. We like to joke in this house that I replicate French about as well as Jacques Cousteau from the Pink Panther replicates American um, English. So it's not super great, but this is a really, really beautiful pumpkin and it is supposed to be very sweet. So I'm really excited about this one. Up next, we have the Coma Coma squash. This is an heirloom from New Zealand. It is a beautiful squash. Just a really cute, teeny tiny little pumpkin. It was good last year. It produced, it didn't take very long to produce. So really like that. Your traditional sugar pumpkin. This has grown well in the past. Again, I think this one is from the Little Shop of Seeds. Can't remember if they closed or not. It might've been another company that did that I'm thinking of. So if it is not that one, I'm sorry. <laughs> Rouge. Yeah, Rouge. I got that part. Rouge. Rouge, Rouge the Etouffee. Uh, this the Tom? Well, okay, like I can't say that. I see it might be the Tom. The Tom? Just rename it and say it again. This pumpkin right here, the Rouge Vif de Tom. Mm. Yeah, exactly. I'm terrible at this. It's just a really big, almost Cinderella like pumpkin. It's obviously French and it's a, more of a flattened pumpkin with a red orange look to it. It's supposed to be about 20 pounds and used traditionally for French chefs in making soup stock. So I'm really excited about this. Not excited about pronouncing it though later in the season. So a Jardale pumpkin. It's, I don't know, I just think it's really cool. It's almost like a white green colored pumpkin. I have high hopes. Hopefully they don't come crashing down. This is another big pumpkin. It's about 12 to 18 inches. A lot of these I'm growing not only for the way that they look, but also the fact that they're supposed to be good, meaty pumpkins. I am not growing delicata squash. Not because I do not like delicata squash, but because delicata squash does not like me. I cannot grow delicata squash. Now, I don't know if it's these seeds. These I have no idea. I have tried growing delicata squash every single year in my garden. And not once have I gotten a delicata squash. Not one time. I do not know why, but I am taking a year off from the delicata squash and I will try again next year. But I think it doesn't want to see me and I don't want to see it right now. So we're going to take some time apart. And then we have spaghetti squash. Okay, I will definitely be going growing spaghetti squash. Spaghetti squash is great. It was very, very prolific. We had a volunteer spaghetti squash from our compost last year that produced well, like 20 spaghetti squashes. It was outrageous the number of squashes it produced. It was really good. Spaghetti squash is um, about three to four pounds. Obviously, you can make spaghetti out of it. These seeds came from Gardener Basics. You can get them off of Amazon. I'm sure they also have a website. But this variety grows pretty well for us. And the great thing about spaghetti squash, and even a lot of squashes in general, especially a winter variety of squash, is you can harvest them when they are underripe. If you do that, you want to cure them in a dark place. I will typically put them in my cabinet in my fake pantry in the living room and just leave them there and they will ripen. I had some spaghetti squash that took four or five months to fully ripen because they got picked early, but they had gotten vine borer damage and I was either going to let them kind of decompose naturally there or bring them in the house. All right, up next we have the red curry squash. This was a really cute little Japanese winter squash. It was, I don't know, five pounds maybe. It says it can get up to 10. Ours were pretty small. They did get attacked by the vine borers, but so does everything else that's a squash in our growing zone. So these were just super cute, decent little fruits. I will say eating them, there wasn't a lot of meat to them. But the point that you could almost argue a case for not growing them in future. There was not a lot of substance to these little fruits. However, if you're growing them for the purpose of fall decoration, they store for a really long time. So you can make a really beautiful table display or a porch display or something with, with these cute little squashes. 
And sometimes it's fun to grow things for that purpose. Sometimes it's okay to grow things that aren't just for preserving and eating purposes. You can grow things just because you enjoy them too. And so we are going to grow this again because it was a cute, fun little squash to grow. Up next, we have the Sibley squash. This will be our first year growing the Sibley squash. This is from Seed Savers. This was given to me by a friend. So I'm excited to try these ones out. The True Hubbards are sometimes used as a trap squash. So sometimes people will plant their Hubbard squashes in between their other squashes, like their pumpkins or what have you because vine borers seem to be very attracted to those particular varieties. I can't really attest to whether or not that's something that's worked for us in the past because I haven't grown a lot of Hubbard squash. I've been a little nervous too. We are going to give it a go this year. We're, these are from Gardener Basics. This is just your traditional true Hubbard squash. It's supposed to be about 15 pounds. And then we have a baby blue Hubbard from Baker Creek. I got a couple of years ago. I think I may have planted one or two. But this is about six pounds. So we'll see how these do this year. But we are going to be using a lot of our squash as vining ground cover. It's sprawled out in vines everywhere. So around things like our corn, our sunflowers, our taller crops that are going to go in the perennial garden, which does sound a little odd because they are annual plants, but we are starting perennials from seed. We're going to put a lot of those in the kitchen garden so I can baby them and pay attention to them and then they will go in the perennial garden this next fall. You want to always keep your soil covered. If you haven't tried doing that in the past, it's probably one of the best tips I can give you is try to keep your soil covered. Whether you use a straw mulch or you use wood chips, which we do, you want to keep your soil covered. There's a lot of benefits to the microorganisms in your soil and the rate in which you're going to retain and hold moisture when you keep your soil covered. And you can do this by the means that I just talked about, or you can do this by using natural plant coverings with things like sweet potatoes or squashes. However, they can be a bit of a bully. Because they grow so well and so large, they can bully other smaller plants. So you wanna be sure that after you're using squash as ground cover, you are using them in your taller varieties of plants. Things like tomatoes, things like sunflowers or corn. Taller varieties of plants and flowers can be really, really great if they are interplanted with squash. Right, up next, we have our, our zucchini slash summer squash section. This is a lot of zucchini. Okay, something that I will always grow is going to be Zucchino Rampicante squash. This is an Italian heirloom variety. This grows a really, really big squash. This was wonderful in the garden last year. Its flavor was exceptional. It was just a beautiful squash. It tasted great. So we're definitely going to grow this again this year, and it didn't get overcome with vine borers immediately. It wasn't one of the first things to go, so I'm happy to grow this again next year. Round zucchini is one of my favorites to grow because it's adorable. Who doesn't love a round zucchini? It's a very niche thing to grow. Really enjoy it. You can also cut it up and make like zucchini fries and zucchini steaks from it, which might not sound very good, but it's actually pretty tasty if you season it well. Have gray zucchini and black zucchini. I will grow both plants. I will grow more of the gray zucchini than the black zucchini because it grows better in my garden. Year after year, the gray has produced better than the black zucchini. Now what I will say is the gray zucchini is typically considered to be a Mexican variety of zucchini, so it does well in arid conditions, which could be why it performs better for us here in the Southeast in South Carolina. But I will grow the black zucchini with the understanding that I know it's not going to produce as well, but because I enjoy growing different varieties of things. So I have some interesting varieties of zucchini, the golden zucchini right here. So not only is this kind of an interesting, fun variety of zucchini to grow, it's supposed to be quite flavorful. So I'm actually excited about this. This is a newer variety, as is the Coco Zell variety of zucchini. So right seeds in the front and then sweet yard seeds in the back. I've used so right seeds. They've done really well. I have not used sweet yard seeds yet. So I'll let you know how those grow in the garden tours this year. This is just a really pretty variety of zucchini with the stripes on it. And I like to grow things that we can eat and store and preserve. But I also like to grow a beautiful garden because it's, it's enjoyable. It's living art. It's fun for me to walk outside and look at all the plants and really enjoy being outside with it looking exceptionally beautiful. So this is going to be a fun variety that I haven't grown in the past, but looks really interesting. And then summer squash. Okay, I don't love summer squash. I hate to say it, but I don't. I love pumpkins. I love zucchini, that's pretty good. 
A butternut squash is my absolute favorite. I could eat butternut squash for days. I'm not a big fan of summer squash. However, I'm going to grow it because we do use it. But I'm not gonna grow a ton of it. And I have straight neck summer squash and I have the early summer crook neck summer squash. Both of these have grown really well in the past. So I am going to grow some of these because if we have extra, I'm going to give it to people. I love to feed people. I have a dream of one day being able to feed people out of our garden. If I could feed the entire world, I would. So I will grow these because I have the space and happily and joyfully give them out to people anywhere and everywhere. We will eat some of them. I'm just not a super big summer squash fan. Then we have winter butternut squash. Butternut squash is my favorite squash, as I mentioned. It's also my Lolly's favorite version of squash. Between her and I, we can knock out a pan of butternut squash all on our own. Now, the other household family members aren't quite as invested in the butternut as we are, but that's because we're extra awesome. It's really good. So butternut is something that I will grow. Now, I have tried growing dwarf bush varieties of butternut. It's one of the varieties of seeds I'm not going to be growing this year because peeling a squash is, it's work. It's a chore. It's not like it's a hard thing to do, but it takes time. And for me, I would rather grow larger varieties of things that I don't have to make the same repetitive effort with with the, with the smaller bush varieties. Now, what I will say with the smaller dwarf variety of butternut, they were very prolific, but it would take two or three of those fruits to equal one traditional butternut squash. And we have a big family. There are seven people in our family and we eat a lot of food and so I need bigger varieties of productive fruits so that way my grocery budget isn't astronomical and so as far as it goes the winter butternut this is just your standard Walton butternut squash I love this it's fantastic I will always grow that I'm not gonna grow the smaller variety this year though and then I have a green striped Kushaw squash this guy attacked my vine boards pretty much right out of the gate I only got a couple of these fruits last year at all. You know, I do think, I do think I'm going to grow it again because last year is my first year growing it, but I don't have high hopes. Scallop squash and I have a love-hate relationship. The kids loved stuffed scallop squash. It is one of their favorite things to eat. And that sounds really weird because you don't really think kids and squash go hand in hand, but if you take a scallop squash, and you puree the inside and you saute onions and sausage and bacon and cheese and you put it all together and you re it's amazing. So we like stuffed scallop squash in this house. We might actually have it for dinner tonight because I have some in the freezer that I pulled out. But as far as the scallop squash goes, I've grown so many varieties of scallop squash in the past. It's astronomical. What I will say is I've really, really loved the early white because you can harvest it when it is young as a summer squash or you can let it get really big and ripen all the way and it turns into almost a pumpkin-like fruit. This is a fully ripe white scallop squash, which is no longer white. This can be scooped out and eaten the same way you would eat a pumpkin. This has been sitting in my fake pantry for about four or five months now. Same with my butternut squash over here. I'm probably gonna need to cook this one in the near future, but I still have squash in the pantry. It's January, so that's, they've been doing a really good job. So continuing on to the scallop squash. And we also have our standard yellow scallop squash. That one's done really well. I like them, but you only need so much summer scallop squash. It's just the truth. We also have a Benning's green tent scallop squash. This has been really good in the past. So that's where we're leaving it. I'm not gonna go super crazy. I'm gonna use those three varieties and probably do a couple of different plants and we'll limit the scallop squash this year because besides stuffing it, I don't have a ton of scallop squash recipe. So we're gonna limit those a little bit. And that is going to cover the squash pumpkin section of what we are going to be growing this year. So if you guys have some really interesting varieties of squash that you're going to be growing this year, if you have varieties that you have grown and you haven't loved, let me know. If you have loved them, let me know. I love hearing from you guys. I actually remember the majority of the comments that get posted. If I don't hear from certain people in a while, I'm like, I wonder where they are, what they're doing, because I remember your screen names and your, your comments that you've written down. So if you have any suggested varieties, 
or any thoughts, please write it in the comments and let me know. And I look forward to hearing them. So, bye y'all.